What's good, Relocation Football League fans? It's your boy Smitty back here, and this is the start of the final week of the RFL preseason as the Diablos look to try to get at least one win before the preseason is over. They come into this matchup 0-2, and as for the Memphis Steamers, they're looking to finish their preseason bout undefeated. But of course, you can see a few new faces, a couple guys that aren't the usual starters. You're going to see a lot of that this week as there will be a lot of backups getting an opportunity to, to play a majority of the game for at least three quarters. And there's two starting quarterbacks, of course, is going to be leading this from Kurt Peterson. He's been doing a phenomenal job so far with the Memphis Steamers. Shout out to Kurt, man. I got you arm throwing motion correct, man. I got you throwing with the left hand instead of the right. So apologies for that for the first two weeks. But I got you white, right? My boy, uh, put on your gear and everything. All gear that was posted to should be up to date as well. So if you put in a request in the mod, in the uniform request uh, area in the Discord, those were changed up until I had the green checkpoint. But with that being said, let me know in the chat who you guys got winning this game, Mexico City or Memphis. And let's get to it. So, the Diablos kicking things off to Mexico City here. No, excuse me, to Memphis. Both teams starting with the M's, but Kurt Peterson just talked about him. He's marching out onto the field for the first time tonight. He's looked very good. 72 overall quarterback now, 85 speed, so watch out for those legs. And 70 awareness. He's definitely had some highly aware moments so far within this preseason made some really big throws. Two touchdown passes last week. Kurt Peterson will start things off with a pass in the first play of the game. Able to strike across the middle to another star who connected with Kurt Peterson on those two touchdowns, Larry Clark. Actually one of them, and Reed Wagner was in. He was able to connect with Larry Clark up the seam, but here's a run. And 
face mask penalty. That's going to give them 15 extra yards at the end of the play there. So that is not a good job there in terms of tackling discipline by Mario Culver. Got to fit up. Can't have your face, I mean, your hands anywhere near the face mask. And just like that, Memphis across midfield inside the 40. Motion over. And trying to go with some end around play action, and that is not going to work. Mario Culver making up for the penalty, getting back the yards pretty much that he lost off the penalty there. Seven yard loss on the sack. Didn't get back all of it, but at least almost half of it. It's now a second and 17. Pressure coming across the middle. And he's got a completion against former Michigan Wolverine. Tight end, Matthew Hofer. Nine yards on the play. Memphis staring at a third and seven. Here's a throw. Not going to have enough for the first down. It'll be a yard short at the 30. So Memphis is in range to get at least three on the board. But hey, will it be in the preseason? Yep, they're going to go for it. You can afford to be a lot more aggressive in this stage of the season. Here goes a run in 5-5. Five, five. Bouncing outside, he'll kick to the 26-yard line as Jamarcus McLellan, the rookie from Georgia. We you know he can get very explosive with small guys standing at 5'5". Five, five. That's why we call him that. Here's an explosive run for nine yards, too, as T.J. Jones gets nine at the 17. Near first down. Trips look to the right side, back to T.J. Jones. And Jones has got the first down at the 15. And this is going to be a, a very unpredictable week, that's what I could say, because it's, it's so many different guys on the field that aren't starters. So don't be discouraged if your favorite team's catching a beat down this week. I mean, most of the time, the starting guys just aren't out there on the field. The Memphis Steamers moving fairly well. It's second and 10. And a run. Going to be stuffed at the 14 as Jones has 14 yards on five carries. They're trying to keep him at bay. Third and nine. Kurt Peterson using that 85 speed. But elects the slide. Saw the pressure was coming in with the incoming linebacker. And he is five yards short of that first down. You saw that pocket start to close around him from left to right. He just stepped up to get what he could. Nothing open for him. And they'll just set up for the three points. This should be an easy chip shot kick. Just 27 yards away. And the kick. It's good. 3-0. Memphis. Kick through the uprights by Moore. Shout out to the Relocation Football League community and those who are new watching. If this is your first time watching the RFL, don't be afraid to communicate and chat amongst the community. And also, don't forget to smash that like button if you are enjoying what you are seeing. And this is the first time, speaking of seeing, that we're going to see James Ramos march out onto the field. Started off the preseason really rough, but hey, we're going to bounce back this week. Week two was a much better week for him, but three quarters to try to showcase his talents at the quarterback position. In the pistol formation, no running. And this is a huge play, nasty spin move. Gets 19 yards on the carry, Angelo Ferrezi. He was traded for just last season. Going off on that one, he is extremely agile. One of the most agile running backs in the RFL. Play action, you saw immediately on that play. And a big throw over the middle, and it's going to be caught for a touchdown for the Diablos. Denar Pittman in for six. And that's how you bounce back and make a play right there. First run, big first down. First pass, touchdown. Man-to-man -to -man coverage. Defensive back just getting cooked. And we know Denard Pittman has got some speed on him. As you can see, Ramos all fired up. Oh, 
First touchdown of the game belonging to Mexico City. As the extra point is up, it's good. And it's a four-point ball game now. 7-3. McLaughlin also returning kicks. Kicks out just past the 20 at the 21. Last time out, Memphis Steamers. They were getting down the field, almost able to score, but good defense, able to hold them out. And they had to settle for the field goal. So down four, see if they can respond and keep the scoring streak going between the two. Trying to jump outside. And one thing about T.J. Jones, I can remember just back in earlier seasons. I look back in season five, which I believe was his rookie year. And this guy really does not have any good hands to be a receiving back. But when he catches, whenever he has the ball in his hands, he can make some big plays. But here's a shot deep down the field. And it is going to be caught for a first down. And this is what T.J. Holcomb can bring to your organization. A late throw here by Kurt Peterson. And although Holcomb's got all the speed in the world to be able to beat him deep, still good job staying with him. But he shows the ability to high point the football, goes right over top of Mario Culver. And T.J. Holcomb, the rookie out of Auburn, coming down with a huge catch. Here's a run. Speaking of T.J.'s, here's T.J. Linux. 30 yards on seven carries. And that's another nine-yard pickup for T.J. Jones. Play action off the end around, trying to go to the end zone, and it's intercepted. Steamer was unable to get anything done there. Kyrie Davidson, who was a part of the first ever Arthur College Series, played for USC, comes up with the huge turnover here. And, oh man, I'm not sure where Markeith Jenkins was going. I mean, he had Kyrie D Davidson undercut there. That's where you got to box out and pretty much go up for a rebound. And that didn't happen. He ran backwards. I don't think he ever knew Kyrie Davidson was undercutting him and getting there. So a big mistake. And a big run again. Angelo Ferrazzi. 32 yards on just two carries. He'll now come out here in the pistol. Motion. And back to Ferrazzi. Finding a lane. Juking the defender out. And another first down run. This guy could have a record setting day. Of course, not going to count in the actual record books, but preseason highs. Could be Angelo Ferrazzi. He is picking this defense apart. Offensive line doing their job, too. Creating lanes. Play action. Ramos hit as he throws. Trying to get it out there. A good coverage by the rookie out of Baylor. Rodney Goins. Showing he's strapping up the seatbelt. Good defense to knock it loose. Second and ten. Crazy. Knocked down after a five-yard gain. Actually, that's going to be Cody, Cody Carter. College Series 2. Baylor running back. Checking in. He'll still be in the backfield to the right of James Ramos. Third and five. And he is going to scoop up the first down as he finds Denard Pittman. Who scored on the first pass of the game for the Diablos. Diablos looking really good right now. Ramos in full control here. Started off with all kinds of momentum after the big throw down the field for the touchdown. Play action. And set up a screen off of that as Drew Blaze has four yards, second down. Good looking drive. Just the look four man, a four down lineman here. Read option. Ooh, nice cut. First down for Ramos, 11 yards. Hit you with the legs right there. Typically stays in the pocket. But showing off a bit of mobility there. Move the chains. And they are on for this play. 
Crazy averaging 10 yards a carry right now. It's one of the few times they've been able to get him in the backfield for a loss. And this might not be a play that gets, oh, it does get started. Last play of the first quarter. Trying to set up where he wanted to go. It's an end around to the tight end, Glenn Sharp. And he manages to pick up six yards. And that is the end of the first quarter. Put your twos up in the chat. Four-point ball game. Seven, three. Diablos with the lead, looking to extend it. Third and six, Ramos misses on the drag. Not sure if he would have been able to get the first down regardless. And they're going to have to settle for a field goal themselves. 44 yarder here. And the kick. It's good. Really upright to extend Mexico City's lead. 10 to 3. The Steamers had some good looking drives. But just couldn't cash out last time. Got intercepted. And McLaughlin, a good return there. Hey, make sure you guys tune in on, well, tomorrow, 9 p.m. Eastern. Got the Condors taking on the Barons and what should be a good matchup. We're going to look at Dorian Chavis for three quarters in that one and John Bales, former College Series 2 LSU quarterback. Going at it. First and 10. Throws while on the move and Talked about how he had stone hands, but able to catch that. He was wide open. Nine yards for TJ Jones. And another hand off to Jones. Big run. First down as he removed the chains yet again. Shout out to you, Juju Anderson, and shout out to all the guys right now currently in the college series, too. You guys can't wait to get in the RFL. Your day will come. Especially at the end of this year. A good tackle. Two-yard game. I saw that college here, that college football game trailer drop today. I know you guys got to be excited about that. Going to be able to play on that before the RFL draft at the end of this year. So, and shout out to you guys. There's a counter run play. He picks up two yards. 41 yards on 10 carries for TJ Jones. Gun bunch look. Here's a throw. Open man. First down. Gets to the 41. It's Larry Clark on the wheel. Memphis just marching. And again, I mean, this is the third consecutive drive that they have been able to get the football into Mexico City's territory. But again, first drive just selling for a field goal. Second drive, interception in the end zone. They've got to be able to cash out here. And here goes the lefty. Able to deliver this one out to Marquise Jenkins. He was an intended guy. He got intercepted on last drive. There's going to be an injury on the field. It looks like a guy probably didn't drink enough Gatorade or water. He'll get stretched out on the sidelines. It's Andrews. Play action. And too much momentum is going to lead him out of bounds for just a one-yard gain. Kirk Peterson underneath. Back to Larry Clark. And we're now looking at a third and four for Memphis. Another gun bunch look. T.J. Jones in the backfield to the left of Peterson. Peterson's got good protection, a wide open man. Marquis Jenkins going to power his way through. Touchdown, Memphis. The rookie out of West Virginia spent three years there with the Mountaineers, and boy, he was a clutch playmaker when needed. Two years, his first two years, freshman and sophomore year, he was just a guy who rarely touched the field, but every time he was given the ball, he was able to make plays like this and score. Of course, uh, making up for that interception given up last time. 
out onto the field. Here goes the extra point to tie the game up, and we are knotted up at 10 apiece here, guys, in Memphis. Steamers still trying to hold on and be undefeated. Steamers don't have an extra backup quarterback, so you already know who's finishing out this game. Reed Wagner, their starting quarterback, which is the highest overall rated quarterback in the RFL at a 98. So it's going to be interesting to see how that goes and if Ramos, excuse me, not Ramos, uh, if Kirk Peterson can give him a lead before he goes in to close things out. And George McAfton will be coming in to close out for the Diablos as stretch play to the left. Not going to work out. That's a good tackle. Only by the Forest King. Former College Series 2 UCLA Bruin. Play action. Heat's coming. Throws towards the sidelines. And the tackle is made as he finds Justin Evans. It's just cool seeing old College Series guys getting this opportunity to play. Justin Evans was a part of Houston in the first ever RFL College Series. Ramos on the move and had a man open there, but too much as he was forced out the pocket. Sales high, incomplete. What's going on, St. Louis? He says, update on signups when we touch the field legacy. Uh, well, to for you guys, anybody who signed up, who signed up now in the beginning of this year, there's a return. Let's check out this return real fast, though. Okay, down to 26. If you signed up anytime during this year, then you guys will, won't be touching the field until August. That season, until College se Series 7, which would be on a new college football game, that's when you guys will be able to get on the field. And one gets to the 30 yard line. But yeah, right now, the College Series is going on, so you cannot join that. So that's why you have to wait until that's over. And then once that season's over with, then you guys will be in the next one. And the RFL draft happens in December after that season is. This run puts him a yard short of the first downs. T.J. Jones getting the carry. Third and one. Draw play. Big lane. Good blocks. T.J. Jones still fighting forward. Hits to the 48-yard line for Memphis. First down. Look at the blocking here. You guys just doing a great job. Uh, offensive lineman getting all the way to about the third level, picking up a safety on the block, showing off his wheels. Number 67. Single back look here's motion. And there goes McLaughlin. 5-5 five, five for a seven-yard game. Making the most out of his opportunities. T.J. Jones checked back in. They go with the counter run play, but not the best of reads there by Jones as he tries to bounce outside of a block that's set to cut him inside. Dillard on the tackle in Memphis, staring at a third and six. Diablos appear to be sending a blitz off the left side. Here's a throw, and he hits a sleep. And a first down out to Kevin Pride, starting wide receiver. Give a little bit of action. Comes out onto the field. Picks up 11. Right back to Jones. And that's a good tackle made by Simon Pace. Only at just one yard. What's going on, Shamir Williams? Corey Polly. He's a run inside. T.J. Jones, uh, a quiet, well, I guess I you can't really say quiet. He had some big runs, but a good night so far on the ground. 70 yards. They're going to check in 5-5 five, five to Marcus McLaughlin. Yes. He'll get a carry inside. It looks like he's got the first down, too, and he does. 15 yards on three carries for him. He's averaging five yards a touch. Run game looking unstoppable. Last play before the two-minute warning. Finds a crease and finds another first down for Memphis. And there's also an injury on the field. He'll take a knee. Todd Copa. 
Camera's still on him. He's just sitting there. Didn't get to really see the extent of his injury and if he's going to the sidelines or the locker room. Hopefully nothing too serious, though. Here goes Kurt Peterson. Shot to the end zone. Almost throws another interception down here. He's got to be careful. Collins had his hands all over that. Just able to, unable to hold on. Look up for T.J. Holcomb at the bottom of the screen. See if he goes his way. Throws while on the move. Got a man. Nice cut the field. Touchdown, Steelers. J.J. Vaughn, some starters sliding in, getting some reps, and taking away touchdowns from backups as the extra point is up. It's good, and Memphis leads it 17-10. Injuries going down all over the place as well, and this is why you're not seeing a lot of starters out on the field this week. And he's going to be taken in. They'll start out at the 25. A minute 50 seconds left before the end of this first half. This has been a great back and forth battle. First lead of the night for Memphis. Since they had that field goal. And a great ball, but he steps out of bounds. Unable to keep both feet in. Trying to go to Drew Blaze there. Second and 10 now. Throws over the middle. It is intercepted. Picked off by Memphis at the 40-yard line. William Jackson jacking that one. Let's get a look at this. He just came right across trying to throw, and it was too far behind. Justin Evans here in good hands there by William Jackson. Still able to concentrate on the football and pick it off, take it the other way. And, and now Memphis set up already in field goal range to be able to go up by two possessions here, even with a field goal. Kurt Peterson feeling the heat and wisely throws it away before taking the sack. He's played a pretty solid game despite the interception. Everything else, I mean, highly accurate. Closing in on... 200 yards passing already in this first half, so he's been doing his thing. There's a quick check down. And Marquis Jenkins trying to use his size to run through defensive back there. Good tackle still made by Mario Culver, third and seven. Kurt Peterson goes down for a sack this time, and they'll have to settle for three. This for a 10-point lead. From 50 yards out, and it's good. 20 10 Steamers. And the Steamers keep up at this pace. I mean, you want to try to get a lead over them before Reed Wagner comes in to close this game out. And he, he's already cushioned with a 10 point lead right now. I just don't see the Diablos being able to come back unless they can make some things happen. Here in the third, of course, it's still early in the game. First half, that's all it is. Still got a lot of football to go, but man, the way Memphis is looking right now, even with this second team unit out here for these three quarters, they're looking good. There's a throw, good defense. In and out of the hands, and it's broken up by Stevens. Under a minute to go, James Ramos trying to get outside the pocket and has to throw it away. Great pass rush. TD Leckler almost getting there for the sack. Ramos steps up in the pocket and he's going to scoop up the first down. Second scramble for Ramos, he's got 24 yards. And Ramos with a good ball as Justin Evans still on his feet, able to catch it across midfield at the 48. Mexico City still driving, still going, and he's going deep. Broken up and complete by Stevens. Trying to go to Drew Blaze there. Probably should have put some more air on that one. Ramos just trying to thread the needle.
Ramos going deep again. This is going to be caught this time. First down, Mexico City. No timeouts as they use their last. Ramos looking, throws, and he's got Denard Pittman. And this is the last play they said, forget the field goal. Oh, they got to snap the ball. They did not snap the ball. Wow. And that's going to be the end of the half. They could have just kicked the field goal and set up for that, or at least got that last play off to take a shot in the end zone. Unfortunately, weren't able to do that. And they still trail by 10 as we get ready for the third quarter. I mean, Diablo started out pretty strong. Saw this big shot play here and really kick things off with the game's first touchdown. It's been a great one, guys. If you haven't already, hey, make sure to smash that like button. Subscribe to the Relocation Football League if you're looking to watch more RFL action as the season goes on because this is the last week of the preseason, man. Here's a look at what's to come for the rest of the preseason. Um, well, I guess we can plug what's coming up tomorrow first as we have the Condors going over there to New York to take on the Barons. Barons been looking really good in the preseason. Condors kind of have two with John Bales. And so it's going to be a pretty interesting backup quarterback matchup between Dorian Chavis and John Bales. See who outperforms the other for those first three quarters. But back to the rest of the schedule. Of course, the bottom half of the schedule as usual. These are all the primetime games. I'm looking to bring the reload zone back. I had to cancel the 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 other two slots last week for 3 p.m. and 5 p.m. when we had to move the games up an hour early because I had some things going on, so unfortunately I couldn't do that. But I will try to have reload zone for all three game time zones at 1 p.m., 4 p.m., and 6 p.m. Eastern tomorrow and then cap things off with the Voyagers and the Celtic Tigers that Sunday night. Of course, we have Saturday off, so that will be a day completely reserved for the RFL College Series, so make sure you tune in to those RFL College Series premiere games. And then we cap off the week with a great preseason matchup between the Explorers and the Snowhawks. Of course, a lot of these matchups, a lot of backups involved. So you're not going to see too much action from the stars and the hype that you'll see from the regular season. But guys, can you believe it? This is it. After this week, we take an extra week off just so I can get things ready behind the scenes for the upcoming season. Get ready to drop the RFL mod for the public for you guys to be able to use. We've been working on that today. I mean, this has been great. Shout out to the RFL community, though. With that being said, about to go take you guys right back out onto the field in Memphis. The Steamers with a 10-point lead, 20-10. to 10. Let me know in the chat who you guys got winning at the end of this one. Can the Diablos come back and hold it off before Reed Wagner comes in? Here we go. Steamers kicking it off to the Diablos. So a good opportunity here to spark it as they'll take it from the goal line. Walk down at the 23-yard line, and you know what time it is. Put those threes up in the chat. The third quarter is officially here. Second half underway. Last quarter for these guys to be out onto the field. Pistol formation. Justin Evans getting a fake on the end around, and whoa, what a big hit that was. Angelo Ferrazzi getting toned down a little bit. Dewan Middleton knocked him out in the middle of nowhere with that hit. Good job hanging on to the football, though, and trying to keep his way by Stevens for the first down. That's a good tackle. Three yards shy of the first down. Third and three. Back to the run game, gets a good block, and he's got a first, but he fumbles! Memphis, going to recover, can't keep his footing. And McCollum gets it at the 35-yard line. Man, he got hit by three, that's Rodney Goins, who comes in for the final kill shot. Oh, that fumble, and there you go, Rook, making a play. Memphis sure is steaming along, <laughs> Connor. Wow. Here's a run. Nice cutback. Four yards for T.J. Jones. He's got 85 yards on 18 carries, so they've definitely been feeding him tonight, and he's been coming through. Bunch look. 
go with some play action out of the bunch. A throw into the flats here. Over. Down at the 20. Memphis is just rolling. 14 to 17 is Kurt Peterson. And this is the guy who's looked at to be the future of this Memphis Steamers offense. Gets a free play here as they jump with the finger off sides. And this is blown straight up. So getting lucky on that one. They'll get a free five yards. Evan Lauderdale. Big mistake. Spread bunch there to the right side. They'll run to the right side. TJ Jones gets stopped immediately on that hit, but 96 yards rushing for Jones. Four yards away from the end zone. Memphis not playing any games here tonight. No wide receivers. I formation, great block, trying to fight his way in, and the Diablos will hold him a yard short as he's two yards away from 100 on the night. Jones looking a bit fatigued back there. Counter run play, and he is absolutely leveled in the backfield. And takes quite the hit from Dre Willis. Third and goal at the four. More than likely looking to pass this in. Throws. And it's out of reach. He did have Marquise Jenkins. But it was just a fingertip out of range. And they'll have to settle for the field goal. They'll tackle on three points. Still a two possession game. 13 points down are the Diablos. 23-10. Defense just able to stand enough. Take this one out of the end zone. A few deep yards deep. See? Down at the 18. Got a favorite RFL team. Get some RFL merch at an RFL Red Bubble store. Make sure to go ahead and visit this website. Next play about to start here, though. Play action. Quick throw into the flats. And here goes Quinn Sharp. Fighting his way through for some extra yards on that tackle from Stevens. Quinn Sharp, very athletic tight end. He is a starter for the Mexico City Diablos. Still out there playing three quarters. And Angelo Ferrazzi fumbled last time out. Held to just two yards on that play. Oh, there's a flag. Might have moved on offense here first. And the refs will agree. That is a false start. It's going to push him back five to make it now a second and 13. Read option. Ramos, stiff arm, not going to work. Only one yard back. Only 12. Ramos steps up in the pocket, throws, got his man, and he is inches short of the first down. Catch made by Denard Pittman, and at the 42-yard line, not sure if they'll go for it here. Yeah, they're not going to do that. They'll punt this away. Fair catch at the eight. Usually you let those just bounce its way in the end zone. Kurt Peterson. And he's looked great. Did miss a touchdown though on that last drive. Has thrown an interception, but outside of that, I mean, he's been very efficient for the most part, but he's going deep. And just overthrows his man. That was Jake Pride. He was just catching up, getting a step. It's tight coverage. So you got to be picture perfect, accurate on that throw. Oh, big hit. No catch made there by TJ Holcomb as he gets blasted by Kyrie Davidson. And third of 10, uh, uh, third, yeah, third and 10, third attempt 
here by Kurt Peterson while on the move, and it's intercepted by Greg Pounds. The former Florida State safety now converted to corner, takes it to the 25-yard line. Diablos have excellent field position to work with. Just trying to create a play. This is the second interception of the day. And man, just a, a bad ball there. Just throws that up. Even still gets his receiver killed there. Saw Jake Pride getting hit sticked after that. In the round play. Denard Pittman down at the line of scrimmage, so no game there. Good opportunity to cut this deficit in half. Another motion. And this time they'll hand it off, trying to cut up the middle of the field. Two yards on the run, Angelo Ferrazzi. Third down and eight. James Ramos. Finds a man, but he slides instead of continuing on with the reception. Fourth and one, what will the Diablos do here? That's Glenn Sharp, still a young guy, just a second year in the RFL out of USC. He's got to catch that and keep it going. He's definitely got the capability of doing that. They're going for it, though. Motion back over to the right side. They're going to put it in the hands of Angelo Ferrazzi. And Ferrazzi going crazy for a first down. First and goal, Mexico City. And that, he did pick up that nickname, Too Crazy for Razy, way back in the day. This guy used to be a starter, played for a couple of teams, played for the Condors, played for the Explorers, now here with the Diablos. Double pump off the play action. Here's a throw, got a man wide open, and it's a touchdown to old veteran Griffin Pritchett. A great job taking advantage of the turnover. Diablos get themselves right into this one. He just had his guy smoked on that round. And the two tight ends in the 80s and overall, and all of them starting in positions in which they'll be starting this season. So starting tight end unit able to get in the end zone. And the extra point will make it a six-point ball game. 23. 17. This has been a great game. Three minutes and 14 seconds. Now counting after this return. And McLaughlin won't make it to the 20 yard line. Good job there. Great pounds on special teams making that play after getting the interception last time out. He'll be on defense. TJ Jones. Gets a carry for a few yards. Corner's going to be in the faces of these wide receivers, but they'll back up. Peterson trying to extend and move around, but nothing open. Had to throw it away. And the Diablos have the steamers in a third and eight. Peterson getting outside. And he throws it away again. Look at the coverage. Everything locked up. Diablos playing well. It looked like the Steamers were just starting to run away with this thing. And just like that, Diablos turning this game around. Makes some big plays. Defense stepping up big time. As look at this one to the 41. Like I said, they're looking to try to give the backup team after this some kind of lead before Reed Wagner comes in. You don't want him having any type of lead. Read option. And Ramos showing off a bit of vision. Running the lane for three yards. Steamers might be going man here based off the look. And that they are. Had a man beat on the out route, but good recovery by Mamadouk. And, oh, 
What is going on here? Whoa. All right, guys. So, the game just crashed. Off a crazy play. But the good thing is, I think I'm going to be able to get it back and pick it back up where I left off. But the part that sucks is the fact that we won't have the photos up till that point. So, RIP to the photos. Uh, man, that, that sucks. I haven't seen that happen so far this season. Uh, yeah. So that just happened. Or at least the game crashed itself. Because that, now that should give me a chance to go back to reopen it. I'll play the music, of course, of the Thursday night theme. And we'll see if we can get this back. Man. I guess it's time for some promo. Tune in tomorrow night, same time, 9 p.m. Eastern. Barons taking on the Condors. And what should make for a great week three preseason matchup. Here's the rest of the matchups coming up this week as well. You can go ahead and tune into that. If you want to have a visual of this yourself, you can go follow us on social media. So that way you can tune in to um, all the graphics, the latest things going on. Unfortunately, you won't be able to keep up with the RFL as easily as you could before with other external websites we used to use like Eon Sports and stuff like that since we've made the full transitions over to PC um, unless you have a PC in Madden. So, yeah. So we're going to see if this game is back. It says, oh, it says game in progress. So I'm assuming, yeah. So let me show you guys the game is saved but r.i.p to the photos let's go ahead and play the bell for that photos are dead we'll get you guys right back out onto the field in memphis i guess we had ourselves a little commercial break right, we're slowly coming back yes, here we are looks like okay so i can go ahead and send this back good stuff good stuff Back out onto the field and oh no. The shot down the field and it's incomplete. And unfortunately, we got spoilers, man. Wow. Is there any way that I could. Yeah, we're just going to have to zoom through this. Oh, that sucks. Why would it turn it? These aren't even my settings. Oh my goodness. RIP to scores on, uh, on Sunday. But at least you guys can be able to see, uh, find out how those scores un uh, happened. So, <laughs> oh man, that sucks. Let me see if there's any way I could cut that off though, because I do not want them revealing anything else. Uh, visual feedback. Yeah, why is this even on? Like, it even it turned everything on. Yeah, I don't know what's going on with this. So I'll, I'll just have to probably turn this stuff off in the main menu too, because usually this stuff is off. But at least we know how to. At least I can take that off. So not going to see any tickers, no more reveals. But uh, a few games leaked. Uh, let me see. Let's take this all off. Yeah. So we should be good. Everything off. Cameras. Yeah. All right. Let's get back to the action, man. Yeah, that's crazy. I wasn't expecting that. I didn't think it was going to show the... It was off the whole game. Then you just come back and they start showing them. That's crazy. Oh, I didn't even pick the right thing. Good change of possession. Which will probably bring me right back to the screen after this punt. But... Wolf down. There's a backspin on the punt. Gonna be downed at the 13. TJ Jones, 4.4 yard per carry average right now. 22 carries, 97 yards. That's one thing I love about the mod and just the gameplay and stuff like that. Okay, now we can do a full deal. Is that it gives teams ability to be able to balance things out and run, man. So that's good. The first and 10. Play action. Kurt Peterson can't let it go. Second sack of the night by Dillard. 
And this Diablo's defense in this third quarter has turned all the way up. And Steamers really had no answer. They've been backed up near their own end zone inside their own 20 for the last three drives and just can't seem to find the right plays. I, I feel like some of it's getting away from starting out with the run game. That's something I think they should do because they've had a lot of success with TJ Jones. And as soon as they run, he's able to get a good game to break him over 100 yards here tonight in three quarters. And this play right here most likely may be the last of the third. Quick throw into the flats. TJ Holcomb is going to be stopped short, but they're going to say he got the first down. I'm a little bit iffy on the spot of that. We'll have to see if Mexico City challenges, and they won't. And that's going to be the end of the third quarter, and that's it for Kurt Peterson. And those guys get an opportunity to play for three quarters here. Put your fours up in the chat. The fourth quarter is here. Reed Wagner is here. And he got a new set of downs. Does have a different cast of wide receivers, though. There's a throw. Trying to thread the needle in there. Good defense. Broken up by Chris Randolph. That's a starting corner. Empty set again. Wagner outside the pocket gets it in there catch made for six yards third and four the pass throws oh he fumbles big time hit but could not recover it good reaction there by McWallen no instant replay oh man I like to see that. Caught the ball, got absolutely drilled. Didn't even get to see who it was. I had that pop. Play action. Reed Wagner throws on the money. Got this guy, Eric Reese, first down. And this is just what you can come to expect when the big guy checks in the game. And he's not going to miss for the most part against this defense. Got backups out there versus some starters, and yeah, it can get ugly pretty, pretty fast. High formation here. No run it. McLaughlin picking up four. Second and six. McLaughlin. First down for 17. Five carries, 26 yards. And they've just been doing their thing on the ground. Really no need to air it out either. I mean, got yourself a lead. Free play two here, and they're going to go with some play action. Reed Wagner able to squeeze that one into pride. And I'm sure they're going to take the encroachment. The offsides. Let's get those two confused. I think encroachments when you actually make contact with the player. Offsides is when you snap the ball and the other guy gets across the line. So catching him there. Five yard free play. Almost catching him again. It's Marvin Woolfolk's checked in. So starting defensive end came in. There's a throw. Oh, big hit. Good catch by Pry, but boy, did he take one. For the team, Michael O'Neill, I uh, mean Matt O'Neill, the big hit there, and a good play off the edge by safety Clayton Zeno, second year player out of TCU, big time hitter, had a great rookie season for the Diablos last year. Lee Wagner got the drag wide open. Romeo Jackson's checked in. And he's almost in the end zone for a touchdown. We're seeing starters come out here to close out the game. Man. Romeo Jackson, one of the 299 overall wide receivers in the league. First and goal. Wagner. Oh, he's intercepted. 
Picked off in the end zone. Foot race won't outrun the defense or the offense there. And the only way you're going to get run off of him here in this situation is when you got to go up against a starter. A, a starter. And Sheldon Reinhardt, top five overall rated cornerback in the RFL. What a break on the ball, picking it off. First and ten. Under eight minutes left to go here. And we are getting a look at George McAfton throwing it high to avoid double coverage. That could have been intercepted if it was accurate. And the strike on the out route, working in the slot. He's back up running back, Cody Carter. His first catch good for 10 yards and move of the chains. Single back. And so go with some play action. McAfton checking it down. And looks like now we're getting a, a starters matchup because it's a lot of starters right now on the field to close out the game. And so they're getting a little bit of exercise in before the season starts in a few weeks. And Cody Carter. Gonna fall two yards shy of the first down. Even Sean Richardson still in there. I even took that guy off the depth chart. He's still playing. Some of these guys just refusing to go out. Now we see Jay Robinson there. Good blocking. Breaks a tackle. Cody Carter has a big run, but there is a flag on the field. Holding. Oh, that's a killer. Had the big play there, but Rudy Carmichael. Rookie tight end. Backing him up. Third and nine. And that's not going to be enough for a first down. Captain's got the completion. Four from three. And I would think they'll pump this away in the arm. chance to try to take the lead if they could have got down the field and scored a touchdown able to pick Reed Wagner off in the end zone so that was huge as they were driving down the field got a run play and way to power through just to get back to the line of scrimmage 5-5 five, five. on the run there good job by the defense second and ten set up a Screen. Romeo Jackson trying to get outside. And he'll just pick up four yards. Solid game. And a good throw, but just can't hold on to the ball. Broken up by Duval. And it's fourth down. This away and get to that about the 23 old splits. Special teams for a moment there down at the 48. George McCaptain will try to lead these guys back. McCaptain in the flats, big hit. Five yard gain. Griffin Pritchett. Getting blasted there by McCullum. Back shoulder throw and back to Pritchett for the first down. 39 yards away from taking the lead, or from tying it up with the extra point to take the lead. And another back shoulder throw. And that's what veterans do. Sometimes you get sanked in. And it's hard to guard these guys because they just have that experience to know when to connect, when you're going to run certain routes and do certain cuts. Here's a shot to the end zone. That's broken up incomplete. Good defense. 
Gafton trying to take the top off the defense there. Not going to work. In the round play, cuts back. Oh, nice cuts here. Courtney Mitchell, former explorer, here in his second year with the Diablos. Picks up three yards. Third and seven. Gafton throws while on the move. And he's got a man. Touchdown, Diablos. And he finds his 99 overall wide receiver, Piku McCullough. This is the other guy that uh, is a 99 at the position in the RFL. And he was wide open. Absolutely killed on that route. Looks like he ran a deep out or a flag of some sort. And this for the lead. It's good. 24-23. Six plays, 52 yards. Great drive, great response. And the Steamers. Ooh, not that great of a return. Goes down at the 18. A minute and 52 seconds away. From an undefeated preseason or a blemish to the Diablos to get their first win. And that's a nice catch on the in route by Eric Reese. First down. 47 yards. And they look like they're going to send a quarterback blitz here in the slot from the right side. He's actually going to fake it, drop back. Here's a shot deep down the field. Broken up incomplete by Chris Randolph. Looked like he had him there for a second. Good recovery and Brian able to catch that in some heavy traffic. A minute, 18 seconds. Two timeouts for Memphis. Good throw. And the catch made for a first down. Once again, one minute now left to go in this game and counting. Wagner throws it up. Incomplete. Had some serious heat coming at him that time. And all they really need to do is get the field goal range to call it game. Second and 10 at their own 41. Feeling some heat, has got to throw it away. They've got to get all the way to about the 36 to 35 yard line in order to get in range. And right now, third and 10. Guys huffing and puffing, looking tired. There's a throw. Catch me, but takes a hit. And this is the game right here. Can Memphis keep it going? Fourth and two. There's a throw. Wide open. Amir Williams coming in playing receiver. And they keep it alive and stop the clock at 43 seconds. All they need is about 11 yards. And they are in position to win this game. They still have a timeout remaining as well. Here's a check down. McLaughlin brought down at the 40. Letting the clock run down still a little bit. Reed Wagner, quick throw. It's intercepted. Picked off, and that is the game. Two picks by Sheldon Reinhardt. See you later, bye. Touchdown, Diablos. Wow, I was talking about Reed Wagner and how him coming in is going to most likely ice the game. But Reinhardt ices the game, picks him off twice. In their top corner getting the best of Reed Wagner here in this one. And that's just, oh man, a mismatch on the defense or in favor of the defense there. He had Mir Williams running a hook route against the top corner on the, on the team. He was not going to win on that route. And the extra point is up. It's good. 31. 23 the score, and it looks like the undefeated preseason is going to come to an end and not happen for Memphis. Sheldon Reinhardt gets it done.
Two interceptions and a pick six. Ooh. So they're just going to need to take a shot down the field. Hope for a miracle. It's a throw. He can't even catch it. Six seconds. Time has expired, and this is it. There is a flag on the field, so they're going to get another shot here. Pass interference, and that was clear as day. And it's on Sheldon Reinhardt. How crazy would it be if somehow the Steamer score was zero seconds? And oh, man, had a shot there for a second, but didn't happen. Diablos get their first win of the preseason, and they end the preseason out one and two as the Memphis Steamers fall to two and one. That's it for them. The regular season starts in two weeks. Final score, 31-23, Diablos. Get those GGs in the chat. Great game indeed. I'm going to go ahead and show you guys the statistics. But again, just to go ahead and plug tomorrow's game at 9 p.m. Eastern, we have the New York Barons hosting the San Jose Condors. As Dorian Chavis gets three quarters to face off against John Bales to showcase their talents as backups. But with that being said, it's your boy Smitty, RFL Commissioner and Play-on-Play -play Commentator. I'll see you guys tomorrow for this game. Hope you guys enjoyed this one. Make sure to like that. Uh, smash that like button before you guys roll out. I'll show you guys the stats, and I'll see you guys tomorrow. Peace.